Good morning. Is it still morning? I've just been sat in traffic in Glasgow for 20 minutes, so it was lovely. Um, so, my talk is called From Amateur to Pro, and I've been giving this talk for many, many years to amateur photography organisations. Um, what you're actually looking at is an AI image. That's what's happening these days. I don't know if anybody experienced with Mid Journey or DALI. Um, it's amazing. Um, if you want to take pictures of any of these things, do so, have your cameras ready, because I've got some good tips, uh, your, your phones or anything like that. Um, so I need to have this thing. So this is me, um, with a better hairstyle. Um, I'm Nadine Thompson, my photography business was called Nadine Dunnigan Photography, that was from my previous marriage, and I just kept my name because once you're established, it's hard to change your name in business. So my talk is going to be slightly different to this wonderful photographer that we've just listened to. She's got some amazing pictures. <laughs> um, and it's a lot more about the business. Um, because when I, I was actually in your place 2007, um, but let's just um, step through this one by one. So CV, yeah, who's bored already, I've got a degree. I've um, actually qualified college teacher in Germany, so I'm German. Um, and uh, I've got an agency in photography, which I got in 2007 from Stevenson College in Edinburgh. And I just have done a postgraduate diploma in digital marketing. So I consider myself a philomath. Um, if you want to be a photographer in life, um, philomath is the best thing to be, which is somebody who's obsessed with learning. Um, if you ever watch courses online or anything like that, um, and if you enjoy that, you can be a philomath. Um, so I'm from East Germany originally. I came here when I was uh, in, in 1999. And I only started learning English when I was 14. And I had to do Russian in school. I don't know anything anymore. I'm trying to learn Spanish. And my first compact camera was when I was 15. I had when I was 15. Um, here's when I, when I moved to the UK in 1999. I worked as a translator. And then I set up my own web design business in 2004. Now, as a web designer, um, people always ask you, or when you develop a website for a business, you always need pictures. And because photography was my hobby, it was kind of natural to be slotted into that and taking pictures for my clients. And that was one of the main reasons why I went to Stevenson College in Edinburgh to learn more about corporate photography. But during that time, <coughs> so I had a photography studio as well. Um, but when, when you think about your photography journey, what you think it's going to be like, and what it's actually going to be like, and there's a huge difference. Um, when I started out, this was my motto, I will never ever take pictures of people, and most certainly never do weddings. I've shot close to 300 weddings now, <laughs> um, and uh, I've done hundreds and hundreds of photo shoots with people, and I absolutely love working with people. And the reason why I do this is because I had an amazing teacher in Edinburgh Stevenson College, and we had the dreaded, for me, portrait class. I had the works. I have read through the questions earlier. Um, Stuart sent them through about anxiety. You know, I had every anxiety um, symptom that you can imagine. Diarrhea, um, the sweats, couldn't sleep the night before, but my... Um, teacher, uh, she pushed me into the studio, which was slightly bigger than this room. She locked the door <laughs> with the client and me, and me in it, and I just had to work it out. And in there, the biggest pound drop, and I actually love taking pictures of people now. Um, I had a weird, I'm going to tell you this thing that happened in the shower this morning, right? So somebody gave me a box of soap, and it's six cubes of soap in there. And they all had different colours and different smells, and I didn't know what any of these were. Now, we worked our way through the box, and the last one was the one with some sort of black stuff in it. And that was the one that I wasn't looking forward to. But this morning, I found myself having to use this bar of soap. And as I started using it, I'm thinking, oh my god, this is amazing. And this brings the link back to photography, the thing that you fear the most might be just the thing that you enjoy the best. So if you're procrastinating about trying out something, <coughs> try it sooner rather than later and put it on your list to learn about it or put it on your list and chuck it off your list. Um, so in the beginning, um, I was a member of a camera club because photography for me was only ever a hobby. 
and we had portraiture nights, and I hated them with a vengeance. Um, there was 15 um, more senior people in the room, always much older than me, trying to take pictures of the same really shy teenager with a stripey hat and a cuddly toy. Um, and I, that's why I said I will never take pictures of people. Um, I've done any photography that you can imagine. The only thing I haven't done is crime scene photography and dead people. Um, I'm just going to show a couple of things that I did before I took photography more seriously. I have, same as my previous speaker, as a previous speaker, a love for natural light. And uh, I'm the opposite. I love close-in and bokeh, um, or bokeh, depending on which country you're in. Um, and I've tried wildlife photography, all sorts of things. Um, went to Stevenson College, and this was that very first photo studio shoot. Now, I can't stand photo studios. After I had one for three years, I said I will never need one again. White background photography with people is very limiting, I find. Um, so here's just, you see a little bit of that. And, um, so this is the logo, which I then changed to this. Um, the tools, now I know, um, what's your name actually? Daria. Daria. So you mentioned your cameras. And uh, quite often people ask you, what type of cameras do you use? And I think it's totally irrelevant. Uh, my camera's black, that's what I say. Um, and uh, the thing is, people get obsessed with cameras and lenses. You should be obsessed with lenses. You can buy yourself a good second-hand, full-format camera, uh, full-frame, that's what you want. Um, and the lens is more important. Um, if you want to know, I now have got two Leica cameras, and that's what I use, and I sometimes still use my Nikons. Um, so the software I use, the Photo Mechanic, if you ever value your time, um, it cuts the culling down to a fraction of what you do. If you put your, if you put two, three hundred pictures into a bridge, um, it's you're gonna have to pull it in, and then you go make yourself a cup of coffee, and then you come back, and then maybe the pictures are there. Photo Mechanic, I can load two and a half thousand pictures in one folder, and they will dis display instantly, and you just step through them, cull them really quickly. I do most of my editing in Lightroom, Photoshop just a tiny bit, and Bridge I barely use these days. I use SmugMug, um, which links up with Loxley in Glasgow for online printing, um, and then I use Smart Slides that allows you to create videos of your images for social media, and they have got a huge music library, and it's quite cheap to use, and the music is free to use um, or included. Now, what are these letters there? P-S-A-M, what does P stand for? Anybody done a camera before? P? Program A? S? M? So that's how I label it. Um, P, I call that the pray modus. Um, you pray that the camera takes a good picture. Um, until probably five years ago, I was doing A of your good pictures. Shutter speed you need when you do slow motion stuff or if you do like waterfalls and things like that. And I'm now fully manual and with a Leica everything is manual anyway. So even the white balance and everything and the focusing as well. Um, so I quickly changed to lifestyle photography and I'm going to go a bit quicker. I take pictures of people without additional lights, without any reflectors. Um, I get incredibly bored quite quickly with things so I don't want to be stuck behind tripods and things like that. Um, I love taking pictures of any age apart from under six months um, and beyond that, um, so I don't enjoy that too much. Um, this is quite cool, this was in the studio, uh, they are twins, and then I took pictures of them every two years, um, and that's still going on, so they're now 15. So that was their first day at school, and that's when they're seven, nine, and I think there's one missing. And when I did photography in the studio and the groups, I had pictures like that. And we've all seen them in families' houses, and I can't stand these photos. There's limbs missing, it's just torsos, it's just not nice. Uh, personal opinion, and I'm very opinionated about photography. Um, also, when you have a photography studio, they tend to have bare feet. The reason being that your white backdrop is ridiculously expensive to buy, so the backdrop itself is about £2,000. And when people go to a photography studio, they wear brand new socks, which have never been washed, and then you are left with black scuff marks that will never come out. So that's why they are all bare feet. It's not nice on the wall. Um, 
outside it's totally easy to take pictures and um, as Daria was saying, lots and lots of instruction to people on what you want them to, to do and where to sit. Um, babies, I've done my fair share of newborn baby photography. Um, obviously that is not held up. She or He is lying on a black sheet and dad is kneeling behind him with the hands cupped around the bum. Um, and then the rest is Photoshop. Um, and I like to shoot into the light. Um, and I've done this kind of stuff as well. And what I've done there is actually I bought a shower curtain in the baris. I bought a skirting, uh, skirting board and some flooring in the baris. That whole setup cost me about £30. And people say, I need to come to your studio. And it's like, well, actually, my studio is in the back of my boot. And I built it in your house. Um, the best thing, if you're ever interested in newborn photography, you can have in your boot is a hairdryer. Um, you want to, if the photo, if the baby is here, you want to plug in the hairdryer over there, switch it on, baby will sleep within 30 seconds. It's not a nice noise to have, but it's better than a screaming baby. A very recent thing that happened in my business, sticking, is proposal photography. Um, they contacted me and said, I want to have you take my pictures when I'm proposing to my girlfriend. And um, since then, I think last year, I photographed 38 proposals. Um, I'm with the client for a total of 30 minutes and I charge £300 for that. So, and that seems to be a good price and I charge more if it's at the weekend. Um, I'm trying to keep my weekends free now. That's just Photoshop. Um, that one went viral. Um, the whole thing about social media um, is that as a photographer, the first thing I would, do, I would say is never ever buy followers. They just turn your account into a spam account and followers do not, these spam bots, they will not engage with you. Um, and if you ever think that somebody has got a spam account, if they say they have 100,000 followers, they should have 1,000 likes per image and about 300 comments. If that's not the case, somebody bought followers. Um, and uh, for photographers, I think the majority of photographers, they keep pumping out pictures and pictures and pictures. And that's important. But I think what customers are looking for is having their questions answered. I currently run an account because I run a digital marketing agency now, and um, it's the SEO club. SEO is how you rank in Google. Um, and uh, every single post I make is answering a question. So if you listen to what potential customers are asking you, put a picture there, or put a question on the first slide, explain it, and then put pictures after. And People will follow you because you give them amazing advice on how to book a photographer and so on and so on. And also what I found my photography account, there's millions of photographers following me, not millions, but uh, and that's pointless. Um, so here, that was an idea, basically I told them to write a message to each other and then obviously that happened. Um, you can have really tough situations. Uh, this was a proposal in the Botanic Gardens and it was in December and it was pitch black. I thought there was a bit of light, so you have to get creative. So I dismantled the decoration and used that for um, pictures. Um, <clears throat> I've also taken photos in the streaming rain. Um, quite often people say, what do you wear? The most important thing is be comfortable, um, be understated. Uh, my best find is Skechers. They come in all shapes and sizes and they keep you on your feet all day long. Um, now, yeah, it's actually run close to 300. So I'm just going to step through them really quickly. So this is a wedding we shot in Germany. I actually was there when this, when this man was born uh, in 1989, and then it was really cool to photograph his wedding. Um, so it's all the details. So when we did weddings, um, we were there from the morning until around about the first three dances, um, all using natural light. Outdoor weddings are the best because you can walk around. Um, so just stepping through them really quickly. So I've got some more interesting. So this was actually, uh, I, was pro I was promised the, the garden and this uh, wedding venue, and there was a second wedding going on, and I couldn't actually go into the garden. So this is what I was presented with. So what you're going to do in a car park, um, and uh, a thing that you can do for yourself is get yourself into a really difficult situation with a person and try to take an amazing picture, and that's obviously what I've done here. So the tree was my, my, my point to use uh, to take pictures of them. And quite a lot of this is direction, so you tell them exactly how to stand, and the more direction you give, the more you talk to people when you take pictures of people, the more at ease they will feel. Um, 
you tell them to, to where to look. So some people just look that way, this way. And if you mirror stuff to people, so if I have them like you stand this side of the room, I want you to stand like this. So you actually mirror it to them. This side of the room, you stand like this. I want you to take this hand and then you hold the hand up and everybody holds the hand up and they say, and now you pop it into your pocket. So it just makes group photography really, really quick. Um, and then I told them to charge towards me so that then, and I like to twist things. Normally it's the girls that shows off the rings and it's just the guys. So speeches, reactions, dance, um, all sorts of things. And this is a wedding I shot in 2014, I think, and the editing is horrendous. Um, and then she actually didn't contact me for another three years to want the album. And I said, I can't do an album of that. My style has changed so much. So the next slide is the exact same wedding, and it's now coherent. And don't chase the style. I think there was a question in the thing that uh, uh, Stuart sent. Don't chase a style let your style come to you. Um, it took me 10 years to find my style. Um, and I took pictures and pictures and pictures. Um, and, and I now I want my pictures to be bright, true colours, but ever so slightly on the bright side. That is what I like. Um, and make sure you have your phone with you. This couple, they asked me to do a sparkler exit. I had no idea how to shoot it. YouTube was my friend during dinner. So I figured it out and then I did the photo. The best wedding we ever done uh, was in Tuscany. Well, I say the best uh, destination weddings are not um, exciting from a traveling perspective because you don't want to give your equipment into the hold. Um, it was 37 degrees in the shade. They pushed the wedding back to six o'clock from two o'clock because it was so hot. Um, but it was nevertheless a very remarkable um, day. Um, and we tried to get all the Tuscany countryside and things like that in it. So I've done my fair share of commercial work, product photography, jewellery photography. If somebody wants you to do that, run a mile. Um, it's so much editing and uh, especially silver is such a soft material and gold as well. Um, when you see jewellery edited like that, um, it's heavily edited. Every single ball is smoothed down uh, so that it's smooth and you don't see the scratches. It takes hours and hours. Um, now, this was, um, I do quite a lot of um, interior stuff now, and I was in the, photo, uh, in, the, uh, in the kitchen of this guy taking pictures of the kitchen, and I'm thinking, I know this voice, I know this voice, and I never noticed. So I was in Sanji, what's it, what's it called? Uh, Cola? Sanji Cola's kitchen, taking a picture of his kitchen. The guy from Chewing, oh, what's it called? Still Game? Still game. Yes. Um, and on my way out, I saw the big post, and I'm like, okay, that's who it is. Um, so I've done pictures from planes, of other planes, and helicopters, in helicopters, of other helicopters. Um, bloggers have contacted me, uh, they wanted pictures of themselves in Edinburgh. Um, I've done food photography, you know, that bores me to tears. Um, and, but the thing is, I thought it was a cool thing to do. Um, it wasn't really that exciting, and I'm not a tabletop photographer in college, I hated that with vengeance. Um, and I can't organise jewellery for a wedding. For me, if you, if, that, if you struggle with that kind of stuff, stick to symmetry and that will work. Um, so these kind of things, I just took pictures of one here and then everything else was Photoshop. Um, and the dream job we had was in Tenerife. They asked us to come down and uh, take photos of a yacht. Um, and I'm going to go really quickly. Um, we were on the ship for on the boat for two for for a week, taking photos of the boat and everything, and then we were hired back to do another yacht um, photo thing. Now, who agrees with that? So, what I really do now, this people think the most time I spend editing, but I think the most time you spend finding your next client. My editing time has cut down dramatically. Editing is not really that important. If you shoot good pictures and if you run them through, don't be shy to use actions in, in, in Lightroom uh, and buy actions, that uh, slow thing, and that makes things really fast. Um, so this is the dream, obviously. So these ones, if you want to take pictures, by all means, have a great website that is found in Google. Um, attend networking events, depends on the type of photography you want to do. Offer your services for free, but only at the start. Um, see your, say to yourself, I mean, your college now, do that now as much as you can, shoot as much as you can, 
Um, and see, after six months, that's done portfolio work, and now I want to charge. Um, the next thing is don't do swapsies. Swapsies, um, especially when you start out, are very, very attractive thing to do. You need a logo, they need pictures, so you do a swapsies. With swapsies, you can't pay the rent. Um, and also, never, ever accept free photography work when somebody says, well, we'll give you a credit. That's never going to turn into business. In 20 years, taking photographs, a credit has never turned into business. Um, how to make money, continue learning, invest in specialist courses. Best thing you can do if you drive a car um, or if you listen to music, swap it out and listen to books. Get yourself an Audible subscription for £7.99 a month and listen to a book a month. And not, I'm not talking Lord of the Rings, I'm talking business books. Um, Self-help books, books about anxiety has have come up, books about how to set goals in business. Um, there's some amazing stuff there that you can have a look at. And every book usually suggests other books. Um, be critical with your work, but don't be embarrassed about your work, love your work. Um, next thing is, always try out new things. Don't chase the style, let it develop. And change your style if you feel the urge to improve. I was really unhappy with my style for years, and then I, I really spent money on it and, and time. Um, the money thing, don't keep your prices low because you're a beginner. Because people say, okay, I'll start with £500 for a wedding and next year I'll increase by 10%, £550. You're only going to get not so nice clients. I was going to use a different word here. Um, the um, weddings in, in, in Scotland, uh, you can charge easily as a beginner £1,500. Um, I started five, six, seven hundred pounds to start with, I had no clients. I had a business coach to say, triple your prices. I tripled my prices within a month I had three clients. It's bizarre, but cheap means um, low prices also attract price shoppers. And even if you offer them for 500 quid, they're trying to raggle you down to 400 pounds. Don't do it. Stuff that doesn't cost much isn't worth much. Um, you don't have to work with everybody. Trust your gut. Your gut will tell you if it irks you. Saying no will make you stronger, and if you have a bad feeling about a customer, walk away. Social media trap, likes and followers don't mean business. Um, build a true fan base. You don't need millions of fans, and if you want to read this article, this is amazing, a thousand true fans. This is a very, very cool article to know about if you want to build your business. Um, get insurance. Um, have a signed contract, take online payments that gives an additional level of um, professionality to your customers, um, and take full upfront payments, especially if you work with B2C, direct to customer, take upfront payments. Um, for any wedding photography, portraiture, I take the full payment upfront, and if they didn't want to print anything after, they obviously charge for that after. And don't decide too early what you want to specialize in. I was going to do commercial photography, that's why I went to college, ended up doing portraits and weddings. Now I stopped doing weddings, I do the occasional portraits, only do a few uh, proposals, but my majority of things is commercial photography. I work with a lot of construction firms who send me out to take pictures of their jobs. But try out absolutely everything. I've done astro, I don't like the cold, I don't like to stand out in the dark at night. I've done microscope photography, that was the most expensive I ever charged for one picture, which was, I think, £150 per photograph, um, because it was such a big job um, for editing. Try absolutely everything and let your speciality grow with you. Um, you can't decide that right now. Um, don't be obsessed with the camera, be obsessed with the lenses. Um, Fords, um, they are a shop up in near Inverness, but they mostly deal online. Um, if you're looking for a camera, get yourself a second hand full frame or full format or 35mm, whatever you call it, um, and invest in a good lens. Um, join online photographers groups and ask questions. Now, when I started out, when I asked questions about money and things like that, um, I need to, need to wrap up. Um, I didn't get answers because I got snooty replies. Find somebody you can talk to. You can follow me on Instagram and you can pop me a message and I will <coughs> answer your question. Um, I'm one of these people, I, I just love to help other photographers to succeed. And don't be shy to ask questions. Um, ask for advice um, 
And that's my last slide. Any questions? Um, reading books and looking at the competition, how much to go in rate is for certain things, um, and having a business coach that um, kicks your butt. <laughs> even, I know a business coach can uh, cost a lot of money, but even if you invest in a pricing session, there are coaches out there who simply talk about pricing and help people with pricing. Um, the going rate for commercial photography for standard stuff like construction right now is about five, six hundred pounds a day. Um, and for portraiture, there is so many price variations out there. Uh, people want digital, and there are photographers who say they will never give you digital files. I always give digital files, and just keep taking pictures. There was this amazing experiment I did in the college where the college students said, "This side of the room, you only allowed what to take one picture, and you have to deliver that in four weeks' time. Your best picture, but you only must take one picture. This side of the room, you're going to take." as many pictures as you want, but you only like to present one. Now, which one do you think presented a better picture at the end? The one that took one picture. It was this side. Because they took thousands and thousands of pictures, they have lots and lots of more experience than these guys who only pressed the button once. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Is that you were mentioning earlier that you, when your clients were asking you for the classic white background portrait photos, but you hated doing them, where do you find yourself drawing the line between what clients are designing versus your own personal kind of creative input? That's an easy one because there's millions of clients and millions of photographers. Um, if you don't like white background photography, you don't need to offer white background photography. It was um, depleting my creative um, tanks as such because it's the same thing. It's a formula. If you want to, if you like formula style working, you can work with a big studio that just turns them out. But they will tell you exactly where to stand, where to make them look, and that's formula photography. What Daria is doing is not formula photography. It's all over the shop, and it's creativity, amazing creativity, which is great. Um, I like, uh, what I like to show is a connection um, with the person in the picture. I, I want them to be totally relaxed. A white photography studio will not give me that um, and in the short space of time you have. Whereas if they are in a park that they know, um, they are at ease already. I don't I hope that answers the question. Well, that's great. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.